welcome to my podcast. Welcome to the art of feeling better. Um, the whole the whole concept around this is is for my passion, which is as you know, mental health and well being. And my journey over the last few years has led me towards education and how we learn, how we teach, and how we learn. Um, because that for me has become my major major passion and area of work. Because I found that our mental health and our well being in general. Uh, no matter where we're from, no matter who we are, no matter what stage of life we're at, seems to have been impacted massively by our learning experiences and around what you know the way we've been taught and, and and the way we learn. So I'm kind of winding everything back to the education system and and what's happening currently with all the shifts that have been happening over probably the past, well certainly the past decade since I've been dipping my toe in and doing work within within schools. Um, and I've met some brilliant friends along the way. And, the, you know, there's a collective now, as you know, of, of great, th- great people doing great things. And we're starting to, to build that momentum and, and start to co-create some really cool stuff. So I thought I'd catch up with you today. We'll have a little natter about your, your take on things from your background being in education for, um, for as long as you have. Although you look fantastic, I might add. <laughs> you know, good news I, I always say that people say that to me, we talk about being been in the industry for 20 odd years and people go oh well thanks I'll take that <laughs> you look fabulous no I think I just come back from I just come back from being away so the colour I think helps too yeah, really <laughs> right take it while we can shouldn't we but having that kind of such such a lot of experience and wisdom from teaching from being in the system and 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 now, kind of not not so much on the other side, but doing something really innovative and different because of your experiences. So I just wanted you to, first of all, just share whatever you would like to share about your experiences, what's led you to do the things that you do now. Um, I've not done much of an introduction in my little pre-bit because I want you to be able to do that. So just you know, a bit about you, what you're doing and and how you came to be doing the amazing things you're doing now. Oh, thank you, Jane. Thank you. Well, I'm originally from a very small farming community in South Wales, as you can tell by the accent, and that where I began my career within education. And I was very active within my community where my parents owned a very successful business at the time. And it was drilled into me from a very young age about respect, loyalty and how to remain private within things, you know, and um, and I felt back then communities back in the 80s were very much your know, business owners, small towns, and the school was the hub of the community. And, you know, we were brought up very much to respect your teachers. To You know, school was a very respectful place. So I was, if I go back into what my teenage years, because I feel as if I've come full circle with education, if I'm honest, and my teen, I love primary school. But there was something in secondary that didn't sit well with me as a teenager. And I struggled uh, to sit behind a desk. I struggled to spend hours going from one classroom to the other. And I found that I wanted to be up in the woods, you know, jumping around rivers and stuff rather than being stuck, just being embedded things. And I thought, well, I'm never going to really you know, learn, um, why am I going to use Pythagoras' theorems and things like this that I just thought, when am I going to use it? And my mind at 12, 13 years of age was already sort of forward thinking these things. So school was a bit tricky for me to start with. And then I was one of those teenagers, I didn't know what I wanted to do in my career. So our careers advisors basically said that um, it was very limiting at that time. Yeah. So I was put in back into the education system because it was I was apparently I was good at with working with children. So that was the only option that I was sort of given. And I fe- felt that it would have been lovely at that point for somebody to have grabbed hold of me and just extracted my passions, you know. And if outdoor was my passion and freedom was my passion, it would have been lovely to have explored those. But, you know, this was the 80s, early 90s. So it was a bit different then. So anyway, I started, I got into my career of teaching and uh, yeah, I realized quite quickly in my first year because I was, I started in year one with five-year-olds and I absolutely loved the creativity of it. But what I struggled with in that first year was going from one lesson to another. So yeah. basically doing like a, a maths lesson and then after the maths lesson, then you may, might've gone into history. Now, for me, I felt like these children were five years of age. I didn't want to be going from one thing to another and categorising teaching as it was. But we were very lucky that the foundation phase had come into Wales around that time, which gave us more opportunities to be creative. 
And the school that I was working in, the head teacher was amazing as far as listening to us, as far as for new initiatives. So we then created the Leonardo um, themed thematic approach to school, which was fantastic because it enabled us to bring in all different subjects and create it as a theme rather than subject matters. Right was fantastic for those children that struggled to sit behind a desk and I found that that was a beautiful start to the career when that sort of came in as well for us but quite quite um, after a couple of years then I went into mentoring newly qualified teachers and then from there went through my own struggles in life and I wasn't didn't really have the toolkit to deal with it and at that time I was doing my own transition I went to Cyprus to work and to live on a military camp for a couple of years and I had to deal with my circumstances around that time, which I didn't know how to do. There was a lot of grief going on and quite quickly, cut a long story short, I recognised and started learning a different way of understanding my own body and understanding my mind. So from that journey, something, and the only way I can describe it was a, a light bulb just lit up in my mind. Yeah. And I thought, wow, we need to learn we we need to be able to have different toolkits different people in our back pockets to be able to go because not all one size fits all and I did go start my journey with counseling and it was a good starting point I had about six hours of counseling but then I realized after that that I was going around and ruminating over my grief over the issues and problems so I said, thank you so much for it it was a great starting point however I needed a drawing on different tools. I needed to learn and I needed to learn what this grief was, what this pain was, what these emotions were, and to understand how my mind was working. So that's where the journey started and roll on from there, 12 years on now. my I started my business and my business was back, started back in education to teach the, to pass on the tools to teachers and educators around resilience and around learning and understanding oneself. From there, then I started having contracts in different arenas. And to date now, we have trained over 4,000 educators. We have uh, trained in our six day program, 356 senior leaders and head teachers. We tra tra we support challenge advisors, we coach. Um, so quite heavily within the education sector. But equally then we started stepping, stoning into different arenas um, political arenas, uh, sports arenas, then went into the high net worth circles and then now in the ultra high net worth as a confidential confidant within this arena. And I feel as if because I've worked within military, maritime, political, sports, education, business, I feel as if now there's just been so many downloads of so many different sectors that it's just been amazing learnings. And the people that I personally coach now are just phenomenal people. And it just demonstrates that it doesn't matter who you are, where we are, what we're doing, each and every one of us has a mind. And each and every one of us will go through different stresses, pressures, more elevated than others. But at the end of the day, being able to have a strong, robust toolkit in our back pocket just enables us to help others. And for me, I think I specialize in language. And our tagline is learning a new language, the language of your life. So what sits in that is elevating emotional literacy within workplaces. And that's where we are. And we I know we've spoken many a time, Jane, about where our work fits. And we're so complementary of what we do um, from where you are and from our journey as well. And and I do feel that our young adults, the leaders of tomorrow, I think they're going to need a very different toolkit, which we're learning, which we're understanding. We start as a society, we're starting to adapt. But I believe for me that especially for our secondary young adults, that schools and education still needs to, uh, there's a long way to go for them, a long way to go to fit into this society now. I think I mean you just every time you speak it lights me up because it just gives me that confidence that there's just some incredible work happening and it all relates and for me you've just hit the nail on the head that it's a universal truth these these concepts can be applied anywhere so for me that's why my my sort of when I flitted around because trying to find where I fit for a long time because my energy and the way I work was really appreciated in different settings but I didn't really know where I was most valuable 
until I had that penny drop moment of this is the same shit. This is the same shit. I could be deep in a corporate space, support leaders, or I could be with a tent. No, yeah, or I could be in a tent with these people that have no home and nothing. And it's it's yeah. around. So for me now, being sort of a neuroscience coach, that that brain body connection, translating all the jargon so people understand what the hell is going on, and it applies to everything in every situation. And that for me is part of that toolkit building. And just finding people like yourselves that are doing this work that complements it is, is just incredible. And Valerie said something last week. You'll love this. Valerie, like mic drop moment. It's like this is this is just sets it. It's brilliant. So she said, it's not about our past. It's about their future. And it was a quote that she'd heard from somewhere else. And I thought well, that just that that just speaks about education for me in the schooling system. You know, so many brilliant things happening. And I know people think that I'm always sort of slating the education system, but I mean that from the very top down, not the not the people in it and not the, the way it no. works. The fact that it's yeah. stuck in this post-war Victorian bizarre way. Everything yeah. else, everywhere, everything else has moved on and developed, the way we shop, the way we um, communicate. But the education system hasn't, and it's just harmful, really, really harmful. So it has doesn't it? I know, and it's amazing because our educators, like you said, on the shop floor, they are making they are making the best of the situations they've got. But I feel that there's quite an undercurrent of just exhaustion from our educators. And you know, educators do not go into the role because they don't care. You know, especially primary sectors. Primary sectors are nurturers. We nur we nurture these young little minds. But then when we get up to secondary as well, it's a diff it's a different ball game. It's a different business. And we have to look at it in a very different way. You know, our young adults now are they're needing different skills, different education, different way of thinking. And you know, we're talking a lot about it, and the awareness is coming out now, which is brilliant. You know, we've been speaking about it for long enough, but I feel as if we've still got a long way to go. But I believe I agree with you, Jane, it's coming from the top. But it's it's that culture change it's but what does it go with what is it going to look like and this is the thing it's a shift though isn't it you can feel we've said this before there is a definite shift and it feels slightly less like pulling a mountain up another mountain like it has done for the past few years I think all of a sudden especially the last 12 months even the last six months I I felt this real shift and I think and I think I mentioned this with somebody else that I was talking to that it makes me sad that in, in my opinion it's because there's no other options because people have exhausted everything that they thought would work and now people are like right we, we're we gonna have to look at something else and then that some of us that have been in this field for a long time are going hello <laughs> we're still here and yeah and still here yeah. and we can help now we can do something and we were and I believe that you know it's we've been put we've been we've you know dotted around the world as many of us doing different pieces of beautiful work around the world and just getting ready we're all stepping into place now ready for to support and build that new network up and I remember speaking to one of the mums not so long ago and her son um he wasn't he didn't enjoy school neither and they're a farming community he loved being on the farm that's all he wanted to do is just be on the on the quad go around counting the sheep and the cows in the far in the fields and that was the only way you could get him involved in school at that time. And so he came out a bit earlier and she, you know, she went through the right channels and everything. And she even invited, asked, you know, if the school for him to come back into the school to teach them about the land, to teach about how to grow plants, because the school had a beautiful garden there. But they couldn't see how it would work. And it was so disappointing because this young adult was happy to come back to pass on the skills that he had what now the value skill, from that person it's not what value you know he knew how to live off the land and we know and we need that we, we need those we skills we so desperately need these skills but it's also coming back to nature's you know it's the skills that we've lost which is beautiful now to start seeing it in small pockets yeah. of communities and we we're just coming back to learning about these skills that we so desperately could could benefit from it will grow i think as well and that be, leads beautifully into my next question so i've got a couple of questions specific questions um and one of them was going to be around just just to run through because I, I your program is just incredible i know you do lots of different programs but for me the preparation for adult learning is like the key to what everyone needs and what i've seen in schools up and down the country for so many years so will you just do like a whistle stop tour because i want to add a link in if anyone that wants to to look at more because i think that's that's the future i think for me is 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 the way you put that together and and the 
the hope that I can feel from, oh, there's something big here that could really make a difference. So just just give us a rundown on how that looks. Yes, it's a quick um, quick synopsis of it. It's there's 400 minutes of content on this PAL programme. And I believe that it's around the soft skills, raising emotional literacy, talking about emotional intelligence. And we've we've created in a chapter formation. So it's on a platform. It's self-guided, uh, but equally mentors as well. You know, it's great to, to work with the mentor. And that's where you see the real solidifying sort of learnings um, can pull together. And we've got for the PAL program, we have 20 chapters and each chapter has six sections in it. it this is not a this is not a tick in the box for resilience. This is a curriculum an online curriculum that can take up to 12 months to complete. It can feel a bit overwhelming for some, but there is no rush to go through it at all. If you were to spend, say, 30 minutes a day on it, you'd complete it in three to four months. But the shift and the change that we hear from people going through it of how they now have more better relationships with their families, how they can start to communicate better, how they understand their boundaries more, how they can have eye contact when they go into meetings, understand their core values, understand the inner conflict, the inner realms of the mind, how thoughts work, how our habits are formed. There's a whole chapter in there about habits and how leadership habits or leading oneself, how we are. So from there, we've um, we've also had it ILM certified, and it's the first time that the Institute of Leadership and Management brought their certification down to 16 years of age. They can then take the certification into the workplace with them. And we've also created e-portfolios to evidence their work that they can speak to managers, speak to their bosses about how they've elevated their emotional literacy and just understanding oneself a lot better as well. And when we've done the small group work, the rich dialogues that we've been having with these young adults have just been phenomenal. And just getting them to understand themselves. Why am I feeling like this? Why have I been triggered in that way? Why do I speak to that person differently to this person? And it's just understanding what, self, what it's done in them. Yeah, self and the and, and others. It's, it's just what should yeah. be the basis of education and learning, shouldn't it really? we And every group that I've worked with, in every kind of community when we've done some sort of we do lots of creative diagnostics like what are the big problems what are the issues what we and this is what they put in there and this is the solution it's like I don't know how to do this I struggle with this I'm like well this is literally the answer to all of this data that's come out of all my work is that we need something like this and there's very as you know my way of doing things I've got my own platform I do in, in the community but it's not a curriculum and it's not embedded in schools but if you have that approach where actually this actually could be used as part of a you know the, a bigger curriculum within schools and to support teachers and their well-being as well I think that's just like so exciting the potential for that and yeah, you know you said that Jane it was interesting because when we went through the test and learn phase the teachers were asking they were saying oh we'd like to go through this so we regurgitated it and did a teacher version and we're currently going through the teacher version now in Wales we've got three schools have taken it on board and it is leading oneself so we're all leaders in our own rights and you know as soon as you walk step into that classroom you are leading that classroom so we regurgitated it into the teachers so and the feedback at the moment's been beautiful as well it's the same work it is the same work but we've just made it more teacher friendly I think that's essential so for me I've worked with students for years and years and years and I stopped doing that just before lockdown because I could see that I was not having an impact maybe to individuals and I'm really grateful for the opportunity and I'm proud of the work I've done and I've changed some individual lives and I've had some great feedback but it's not my purpose is is to help shift things and I couldn't do that while I was just in this horrible mess and I thought it has to be teachers. The teachers can't teach this stuff if they haven't experienced it or if they are if they are currently triggered by whatever they're triggered by and I don't have the understanding of how the brain works and how then they can't just teach it from a sheet because they can't apply it. So I, I really believe that that's the way forward is how we can support and nurture and grow leaders within schools that have that sense of self and they can emotionally regulate because what a difficult you know job it is without any support so I think for me that's the, that is the, the little key there and then it becomes a culture shift doesn't it and it then it filters down through the through the rest of the school so I'm just I'm mindful of time because you know we're both busy be both busy ladies so I've, I've, I've got a couple of questions that I'm asking all of my guests so I'm going to link in or, or anything you want me to link in or put on there so people can have a little look and some bit further research and get in touch if they want to get in touch with you but my first question is 
how can we change the world what a big question <laughs> just, just, just end your initial thought on how is it possible to change the way the world's going yeah I, oh gosh there's so many when we look at it I think we just need I, I come back to education and I think it's going to be a generational shift and I believe that it's, it needs to be embedded within universities in the teaching practice so that you're going right into the teaching practice also in schools, also within communities, because we've got a lot, many head teachers asking us if the program can go into the communities to support parents. Of course it can. It's the same thing. Um, but then you need support with that, with the parents. And I believe that it's such a big shift that we're looking for to change that. We're always going to have conflict. We're always going to, as part of, as part of the way Thanks, we man. live. And I believe, I mean, if we go back to, I spent some time with some of the Buddhist monks last year in Copan Monastery, and it's amazing how they spend time every day debating. They do the healthy debates. And I feel that if we could learn these skills, that it's okay to debate. It's okay to have these conversations. It's okay to disagree. And it's okay to respect others' viewpoints. And I believe that as well, if we can start to teach these skills, on a greater level, we could have a great, you know, generational shift, but it would take a good 20, 25 years to change yeah. that. But I think and, that's, yeah. yeah, I completely 100% agree. I think that's why some of us are here, that particular purpose, that's mine for sure, is it has to come from teacher. That's why I'm so involved with education now, because that's the only way to do this big shift. It has to come from how we learn and how we teach the younger generations. That's the only way to shift it. And I think it's it's around emotional intelligence isn't it we can't debate and we can't do that when we don't know our identity we don't have a sense of self and we don't have a toolkit for emotional regulation we can't it's just conflict so until those tools are embedded for everybody we can't get to the point where we can have that sort of healthy enriched conversations around different well, some countries also they've taken up um, the yoga yogic philosophy as well which will start to embed within education over the next five years so you know we're moving we are moving in the right direction and you know I think that it will snowball I feel like it's going to snowball it's been a real slow slow push and I think things are starting to gather momentum a little bit and I think once I think it is I think it will like you say it's it's going to take it a while for things to shift fully but I think we're going to see in the next few years a decent a decent shift and hopefully people's well-being and people's health will improve because of that so we're definitely yeah. on the right track for sure now I've got a question which is the other end of the spectrum is I'm asking every single person that I speak to just to give one little tip, just something that you might do in your everyday life, something that can help people to feel better in the moment. So whether you've got any kind of practice that you do or any kind of top tip just for anyone who's watching to maybe think about putting into their life just on the daily. I would say there because we my focus is around language and the way we speak to ourselves, uh, recognizing the thought patterns and how that impacts our reality. So one of the coaching questions that we we teach within our programs is just to start to challenge some of the narrative that we speak. So if you can catch the way you're either externally speaking or internally speaking to yourself and challenge it by asking just a simple question. Is that my reality or is that a belief? Beautiful. And even that gets you to stop and think. So challenging yourself talk. And you know what? I could have, we could have planned it because I've literally just finished filming a course on that for, for Mojo School on kind self-talk, mm -hmm. positive self-talk. So how perfect. <laughs> but it's, it's, brilliant. it's just language for sure is a powerful tool, isn't it? How do you, how do you speak to yourself? Is it based on a belief? And where's that belief come from? Yeah. Yeah, love that. And people can do that every single day from this point onwards. And it doesn't cost anything. It's just a little bit of a reframe, is it? A bit of a shift. You know, they can just, and sometimes it is your reality. And if it is a reality, right, what can I do at the, in this moment that's going to help and support me? But if it's a belief, challenge it. Where did it come from? Do I need to be thinking in this way? Is it relevant to my life now? Is it is it good for me? Is it bad for me? Yeah, I love that. Oh, I love that. That's, that's deep, but really simple, isn't it? Really simple. I like yeah. it. Yeah, like, and another nice one is, Stop, pause, breathe. Stop what you're doing. Pause the mind and breathe. Yeah, power of the pause all the way. That's just yeah. in itself one huge thing you can do. It's difficult in the moment, but when you've got tools, then you can do that. And obviously breath is, is a tool, but power of the pause was a big lesson for me that I had to put into practice. It, it's changed my life for sure, actually, just being able to pause, assess, sit in the moment. And, and you, you make very different decisions, don't you, when you, when you do that? 
Yeah, definitely. Language and pausing, beautiful. Uh, <laughs> last question, and I'm really impressed with myself on timing because I think we'll get it spot on. Um, <laughs> do you have a song that really lights you up and makes you feel good? Because I'm also doing a Spotify playlist. So we're building it, we're co-creating a Spotify playlist. So everybody I'm asking, throw in a song. And if you think of another one, just message me. I'll put that on because it's there's no there's no limit to how many we can pop on. But if you're well, having a down day and you want to pick yourself up, what do you reach for? What what tune do you like? Oh, do you know what? There's a couple of there's you know if you want a power ballad to make you feel stronger or you want a dancey sort of song, I would say um, the power. The one that gets me really sort of thinking about things is, is Sia. Is it is this stronger with Sia? Yeah, that's that yeah. a strong song, isn't it? Yeah. And then um, which is the one I do like then a bit more dancey when upbeat is um, Bruno Mars. Which what's his song? Bruno Mars always makes you feel good, doesn't it? Which yeah, one? but they're feel good factor ones, aren't they? Oh. And um, with, and which is the one with Will Smith and the summertime with Will oh, Smith? Nice, love, do you know that's nice one of my favourites? And I've not put it on there, so you've just reminded me. I'm going to listen to uh, it. Uh, and Mamma Mia is always a good one, isn't it? Dancing oh. Queen or something like that that just gets you up dancing. So and yeah, you can't feel sad or angry or stressed when you have that. So this playlet, we, I'll, I'll send you the link later. It's building yeah. beautiful. There's some pretty gorgeous tunes and I've been able to listen to some things, songs that I'd never heard of before because people are making suggestions on social media and so I'm getting a nice new set of tools uh, that, that are good for feeling good so I'm going to put yeah okay so I'm gonna I'll go back over this recording to make sure I don't miss it but definitely Bruno Mars I don't know which one so you'll have to have a think and send me which one you think yeah, it is. yeah I'll have to have a think about what the name I'm not very good enough if I hear a song I'm like oh that's, that's yeah you the know that's the one you like but the yeah. same one for sure I love that one and yeah Mamma Mia. We'll put Mamma Mia on there. We'll put Sia and we will put, what was the other one that you'd said? Summertime. Is it Will Smith? Summertime. The one, the one I love that I forgot. <laughs> I'm going to do it now before I forget. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much. We finally got to, to, to pin down a date to do this. Really we'll, we'll have more conversations, I think, because there's so much to talk about, isn't there? There's so many things that, that, that we can we can discuss. And uh, yeah, I'd love to chat with you again if you, if you fancy it in the future sometime. Yes, definitely. And thank you so much for asking me as well. Oh, it's a pleasure. Thanks, Tracy.